Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Courtney Ryan, and today we're gonna to be talking about something that is really important when it comes to dating, and that is the topic of income. So despite how important income is, I think there are also a lot of unrealistic expectations surrounding male income and specifically what we expect a partner to be making. So I have a group of seven girls here with me today. We're gonna to be having a conversation about income. I'm gonna be asking them some questions and also revealing to them some statistics surrounding male income and the reality of what's going on. And I really wanna stress here in the beginning, the point of these videos is not to make anybody look stupid. It's just to have a conversation. I think having these conversations is how we understand and learn about these topics. So without further ado, let's get into it. How old are you? I'm 25. I am 25. I am 24. I'm 27. I am 29. 31. I am 25. Okay, and then what do you do for a living? I work as a healthcare reimbursement consultant. I'm a copywriter. I am in the life insurance industry. I am a lead engineer for a software consulting company. I work at a medical spa. Ooh. And I'm in school. I am a photographer and I also work in data analytics. So I am, I just graduated, so I am very, very new at this, but I am a mental health therapist. And is your partner's income something that's important to you? Mm, not necessarily, as long as they're working for themselves and doing something that they're passionate about. Yes, absolutely. I think it's, it's important in the sense that I would like them to be doing something that they enjoy. Um, I think that their outlook on their job probably matters more than my outlook on their job. And because that's gonna set the stage of our dynamic really is their lifestyle doesn't match with mine. And um, it matters in that I would like them to be doing something that they find fulfilling. And I don't really think it matters in terms of how much they're making. And I think again, this just comes down to being realistic about money and money standards that we have in people and I would want to be with someone that is driven but that doesn't necessarily mean that the dollar has to be a certain number to match that. Kind of. Okay, explain. It's important to me that they can function independently from me and it's important to me that I can function independently from them. Okay. So as long as you're making enough to function independently and as long as you're making enough that like we can do the things we want to do together mm -hmm. within like a reasonable timeline, like we don't have to take, we're taking about the same amount of time to like save up for something big. Yeah. That's fine for me. So you would be totally okay with like contributing 50-50 to the relationship? I would prefer that. That's the vibe I was getting. Yes. Yeah. I would prefer that mostly because I just don't, I don't like feeling like love is transactional. I don't like feeling like in an argument if we're at a low point, someone can hold that over me and be like, well, I paid for this and I paid for that. Cause in my head, I'm already keeping track of shit like that, that you could use over me. And that's just an insecurity that I have. So I don't like, I wouldn't want someone to be contributing more than that. So you would want to do more of like the team mentality of like, we're doing this together. We're growing our wealth together. We're throwing things in together rather than like one person being the yes. sole provider. Oh my God. Yes, absolutely. Yes. It is important to me, but it, it's not something that is like a main factor when I'm considering a relationship or a partner. So you're not asking on the first date, how much money do you make? Oh my gosh, no. <laughs> yes and no. I, I do believe that like, while money isn't everything, unfortunately with just society and living and the cost of living, it, it does matter a little bit. It really does. Um, to me, I don't really make great money right now because I'm very new into the workforce. Yeah. So I'm not going to judge anybody for pretty much how much they make because I am not making a lot. Um, so I can't be like, oh, you have to make, you know, this much money for me to date you and then not contribute in some way because that right. is big for me too. I want to be able to contribute financially and feel like as much as I can that it's equal. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, I don't really, I mean, yes, it does matter in a sense, but also it's not the end all be all. Like I don't judge people because if they make like, oh, 40K a year, you know, obviously not great, but I'm like, hey, I'm barely making that. So yeah. who am I to judge? So you're kind of holding your partner to the same standard you're holding yourself. Yeah. And which like, is fair. Yeah. And as we get older, sure, our incomes increase. Absolutely. And you yeah. know, I'm 25. My partner will probably be in their 20s as well one day. So yeah, I mean, we're only going to work up, you know, and so that's exciting and we have places to go. Um, so at this point in my life, I don't think it's it's that big of a deal. No. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're also, you're thinking of it in a terms of like, we can grow together. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm not mm -hmm. waiting for you at the finish line. Yeah. Like, we're, we're building this together. Yeah. So what is the age of the person that you would want to be with? I feel like age is important, but I have learned 
throughout my lifetime that no matter what age they are, they could be 30 and act like a 12 year old, or they could be 23 and be very, you know, centered and mature. I think at this age of being 25, I've looked like 26 to 32 would be kind of the area of the range I've looked at. Okay, so if you had to pick a number, maybe 28? Yeah, 28, 29. Probably anywhere between 24 and 32? Probably 24 and 30, maybe 24 and 32. Okay, do you want to go in the middle, like 27-ish? Yeah, okay. love a good 27. Just 27 is supposed to be a hot year, too. I'm excited for that. <laughs> 25 to 30 right now I think would be ideal. I, For me, too, I wouldn't mind a couple years older. So I wouldn't mind, like... 28, or even a little bit in the 30s, too. Like 31, 32. Okay. Do you want to go 28 just to be safe? Yeah, let's go 28. Yeah, that's good. Ideally, I would like to be with someone around my age just because we would have grown up with similar dynamics in terms of references that we understand. And then also to just, I would like to be with someone that is maybe around my age, but also kind of young at heart, too. Okay, so if you had to pick an age, what would you say? I would say if I had to pick an age, probably 33, 34. Anyway, I don't think I would date anyone younger than me just because I, I don't know, maybe a little bit younger than me and not too much, but the maturity level with men is just not there yet. I've noticed I've dated men that are 10, 12 years older than me and they're still not as mature. I don't know. I guess it's just the type of person that I'm with, but I, I don't really know. I don't really know. I don't have like an age. I don't look at that. Okay, if you had to pick one, we'll do it. Do we need at least 35? 35. Okay, so do you want to go 35 just to be safe? Let's do 35. Okay. I prefer to date men that are at least four to five years older than me, just from a maturity standpoint. I don't want a guy that's still in his club and bar hopping phase. To me, that's really unattractive. Um, I also don't want somebody younger than me, so I would definitely say like at least four to five years older than my age. Yeah. Okay, do we want to go 28 or 29? Um, 28, 29 is good. Preferably 30 to 32 okay. is the best for me, but somebody in their so late So we'll choose 20s. 30, yeah. just because it's kind of in the middle. I go for a range between the age of 30 and 10 years older than me, ideally 34. And what would you want his income to be, realistically? At this current point in time? Mm-hmm. Ooh, okay. At this current point in time, at the age of 34, I would like it to be between 100 and $120,000. Uh, 50K or up. Okay. Do you want to just say 50K? Yeah. Let's say 50K. Over 100. Okay. So give me one number. Do you want to do 120, 100? Let's do 120. 120. And that's to where you would feel comfortable, you know, you would live a comfortable life. That would feel realistic for you. Yeah. I mean, with the way our, like, society is going and our world is going, 120, I feel, is comfortable. Okay. And that even, that's pushing it, maybe even. Like, we could maybe do a little bit lower, but we'll stick with 120. I would hope that, you know, if, if they're going to be that, if they're at that age, depending on their path and, and the career that they're in, um, you know, I'm assuming they've been working for probably six, maybe seven years if they're 28. Um maybe between 65 and 90. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do we want to go 75? Because yeah, it's kind we of go 75, yeah. I just, at least 50K. I would say then I would want someone to make about, you know, then 70, 70, 70. probably 75 okay. at least. 75. Like I said, it doesn't really matter if they're able to pay their own bills and they're able to support themselves financially. That's what's important. Um, it, 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 like I said, it's not really that much of a factor because income is so relative to where you are in your career, whether you just got out of school and you're pursuing a medical job, or if you're in like a business type industry, like I am, like in financial services of sorts, it really varies, you know, but I, I'm not going to put it, I'm not going to put a number on it because it's too variable. I'm sorry. <laughs> because that's it's discriminatory to judge a guy based on how much money he makes. Okay, okay. So we yeah. can kind of go off that. Say okay. he okay, he graduated college when he turned what, 21, 22. So he's like 8 years, 9 years out of college. He's 30 years old. He's had 9 years to establish himself. What is an income that you would feel comfortable living your lifestyle on at the moment if he's 30? If he's 30 and he's been working for almost 10 years, 
maybe 150 to 200 a year for his work experience. We'll so go that, 150. Yeah. But you also said you think it's discriminatory. It is, but you're making me put a number on it. So with yeah. somebody that's got 10 years of work experience, they should be getting compensated well for the time that they put in and the amount of years of experience that they have in that field if they've yeah. stayed with the same field. What do you think is the median income for the age that you specified? So 35, if you had to guess. Like 70? It's actually 52,000. Wow. Okay. Does that surprise you? It does. Lower than you lower. thought? It's a little lower than I thought, yeah. Okay, so 15% of men are 35 making 120. Hard to find. Pretty, it's a small <laughs> percentage. Yes, it is. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's definitely more than some people, but um, yeah. 15 is still not that, that big. No. I'm going to guess it's probably around 50, 55. 33, the median is 49. Okay. So you were kind of close there, around the same ballpark. Um, and then the number you chose was 75. 75,000 at 33 is the top 27% of men. Okay. So, I mean, a little less realistic, I suppose. It's, I mean, it's not yeah. so crazy. It's, I mean, 27% is not that, that much, but it's <laughs> definitely more realistic than some of the other things. These corporations need to start paying up more. And inflation's really kicking I, us. That, that, that's, the, that's the big thing. For age 34, that's tougher because it's not my own age. Um, maybe 70,000, maybe 65. It is $50,000. I could see that being real. Okay, 100,000 at age 34 is the top 17% of men. That feels like better odds. Yeah. I feel good about that. <laughs> um, 70 to 80,000? It's actually 45,000. Really? Yeah. Does that shock you? It does because I've worked my entire career. I've worked around people that have made six figures out the gate mm -hmm. starting in my field. So income wise, I guess I am a little sheltered because I've been around young people that are in high income earning positions from such a young age and they only grow with their success because that's all I know like I've been I've been in my industry for quite a few years now like that that's all I know I'm not really paying attention to right. like what's outside of that so right. the median income I'm gonna go with 82,000 it's 42,000 for a 28 year old wow does that shock you it that shocks me and yeah. what why does that shock you I think and it, I could attribute it to the maybe the industry that I'm in and the people that I've really been surrounded with my whole career. I've worked in finance my whole life. And I guess I'm making an assumption here that maybe the median is higher in that field. But I guess I just assumed that, you know, at 20, I don't know, 42 just seems very low, especially given like inflation and all of that. Just like it's 2023, I would assume that a 28 year old is making more than 42. I don't know, it just, it surprises me. So your own experience, the people you're around, people you've dated, all kind of contribute to why you're assuming that. Correct, yeah. Okay. So if we're looking at a 28 year old making 75K, as you mentioned, that's the 81st percentile. So 19% of men essentially are making um, that amount at 28. I'm pretty sure, I thought that the median income overall was 40K in the US. Okay. And so I'm gonna guess for the average 27 year old, although the average 27 year old in our generation, probably a lot of college degrees, a lot more college degrees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot say, more people go to college now. Yeah, I'll say 55. It's 41. I knew it, what did I said 42, damn it. You were uh, close, you I were knew close. It. I mean 50 is still pretty close. It is. Um, but it's actually crazy because the median income never eclipses $61,000 regardless of the age. That's between, that's in the workforce between ages 16 and 75. But we love capitalism, don't we? I'm not going to bring that into your videos. So <laughs> I appreciate well, you, you can put it in if you want, but I got feelings. Uh, Again, and, that's not on my partner. That's on society. Right. Over 70% of men never even make 100K once in their lifetime. Oh, that makes, breaks my heart. Does it, does it surprise you? No. 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 Pull yourself up by, by the bootstraps is false. It's not fucking true. The top 1% are the top 1% for a reason. 
not all of us can possibly make that much money. Stats like this need to be, I think they need to be made known because I think a lot of women are like led to believe that it's easy to make that much money and that it's easy for a man to make that much money. Like, bitch, if it's hard for you to make that much money, it's hard for him to make that much money. I mean, it's right. hard for you because women are always going to make less. Unfortunately, that's where we're at right now. But that doesn't surprise me at all. And I would never expect someone to eventually make that much money over the course of their life. I'm just trying to live a comfortable life. I'm not trying to get too extravagant. It is shocking. Well, maybe companies need to start paying people proportionally to things like inflation, rising costs of housing, um, rising costs of taxes, because putting people in those types of positions long term is not going to be good because you can only live on a certain base of money before things start becoming unaffordable. So expecting somebody to work 50 years of their life and not make more than $60,000 is kind of unrealistic for how expensive things are getting and will continue to get for people. Yeah, like out of college, my first job, I think I made 35 or 37K, like mm -hmm. my first job out of college, which is less than the median, which is crazy to think about. But over 70% of men never even make 100K once in their lifetime. Wow. Yeah, so if you're 24 already making that yourself, then when you're looking at the dating pool, it's like you expect people to be at that level too because you are. Um, and I think that's kind of the tunnel vision that a lot of people have or just their like little bubble of life, you know, like. Correct. Yeah, like I said, it's an unfair judgment to put a number on what you think a guy is supposed to make because it varies so much depending on what you do for a living, how long you've been working, what field you're in. Mm -hmm. You know, that those are not really fair num like questions or numbers to like put on somebody because it varies i mean like if that's your lifestyle and that's what you're comfortable with then yeah you're gonna go for somebody that if i'm in my lifestyle and i've been doing this and i want somebody in my field almost then yeah there's like some expectations for that because i you know that that's just like what it is because feel every field is a little bit different like if both pe like think about it like two income household if both people are teachers and they're making an average of $45,000 a year, they're bringing home 90000 collectively yep. as a household to support both of their lifestyles, pay taxes, pay their mortgage, those sort of things. It's all relative to what both people are doing. And I do see that, um, you know, in my field, because I do work on a, like a client to client basis, I see people's incomes. And I think that some of them are disproportionate to their age and their work experience. However, I do feel like the people that they choose to be with and marry and be in relationships with, both incomes are similar. I see that. Oh, that's that. interesting. Because yeah. you work with, yeah. I work with people on a client to client basis. Yeah, so I see the income. And it's normally kind of proportionate. Like it is proportionate. Equivalent, yeah. Yes, it is. I think that's why some guys get upset because there's like girls who don't want to work or don't make any money mm -hmm. and then they want a guy to make a million dollars yeah that's not fair yeah. yeah no that's not fair i mean like if you're not putting your end of your work in it's not it's not gonna work we'll go we'll go 55 42 42 000 for a 28 year old oh man yeah Ugh, yeah and if we're looking let's see you said fifty thousand is 40 percent of men make that okay i mean so it's not bad. The odds are kind of in your favor. I mean, it's like almost half, you know? Yeah. I also think too that like jobs don't pay nearly what they should in like any profession. So it's just like, oh, it's sad to hear that. I know. Like 42K is the average for like a 28 year old. Like, wow. Yeah. And then like regardless of age, so between 16 and 75, the median income never eclipses $61,000 regardless of the age. Wow. If we're looking at medians. Which I think median is a better thing to use here instead of averages because the averages yeah. include like Elon Musk, Bill Gates, Which, who are making billions, buttloads yeah. of money. So it doesn't, it kind of sways the data, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and then over 70% of men never even make 100K once in their lifetime. Yeah. yeah. Which is sad when you hear it because you, I just know so many men in my life who work so hard their entire life. Yeah. And they never will ever make that amount of money. And that's like... And, and it's depending on how well educated those men are too. Like college plays a huge factor. Like, well, okay, what's the point of going to college then? Right. You know, college promotes you like, oh, you'll have a better job and you'll have a better income. And then you go to college and you get out of college and you're like, no, yeah. like I'm not making what I was told I would be making. The average salary for a master's degree is like 69,000. Yeah. Wow. Yep. And then you have a ton of debt from going to school. Going to school. And yeah. then you're like, you're constantly playing catch up and then you're not even making what you were told to be making. And that just, oh, that's, it's infuriating. It's infuriating, and that's a whole other topic we probably get into about like the education system and just higher education is like, is it really worth it almost to go back to school? Right. 
All right, so now I'm really even like, oh man, I really shouldn't judge anybody for how much they make because I'm like, oh my god, we're all struggling out here. I like. know. Well, and I think, I think that too. Like a lot of people don't know that, and they're so hard on themselves, they're so hard on other people because they don't know the reality. Yeah. Um. Right. And and like what you're asking for in a partner, I think a lot of people have these unrealistic standards of what they want their ideal partner to be like. Right. right? It's like we're right. going to Whole Foods buying groceries. It's yeah. a checklist of what we want someone to be, but. When you, when you figure out the reality of what you're asking for, it's like, whoa, no wonder I'm not having luck because yeah. I'm asking for crazy stuff. Yeah, like that is unreal. And like at the end of the day, oh my God, like me and my partner aren't making that much money. If, as long as we're happy together, that's fine. I mean, with those statistics too, it's almost like, oh my God, how do you even find somebody that's making, how do I even make <laughs> three for six figures one day? Like, I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever get there myself. So who am I to judge, you know? It's kind of crazy because the median income, regardless of the age, so you said 33, but regardless of the age, it never eclipses $61,000 across the board. And then over 70% of men never even make 100K once in their lifetime, which is kind of crazy to think about. I guess it's probably most people, really. Yeah. And yet we have all these expectations for them to be a certain way, and, and yeah, yeah, most people don't. Well, that. and I think a lot of people just don't know how rare it is what they're asking for. Yeah, that's true. But I think it is helpful to know, you know, if you're not having success with your dating life and you have this grocery store checklist for a person, there are some things you have to be willing to make compromises on, right? And if you meet your dream guy in every way, except he doesn't make 100K a year, it's like, okay, what are you willing to compromise on then? You know, oh, yeah. so. And, and to, I think part of it is too, is you need to put your money where you're, money where your mouth is and um, be realistic. If that's the number you're looking for, then you go chase that number. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where my mindset is, is if I'm gonna hold, I shouldn't hold an expectation for someone else that I wouldn't hold for myself. Right. And so if money's really the factor, then that's on me to go chase. That's not on them. But mm -hmm. if they're, you know, to me money isn't a huge determining factor. I just would want someone that's able to manage their money in a way that makes sense for them and that means more than cuz you can make what like 30 40 grand a year and that which isn't that much at all mm -hmm. and but if you're investing it in other things or if you're being smart about how you're saving it if you're in your lifestyle and and it's and it works for you then i think that's that's something that's that comes down to a character quality and that's a lot more admi admirable than you know just making the six figures and and what have you right because if you were like making six figures but you're blowing all your money and you're a big spender that's not attractive oh yeah absolutely not so i think again it just kind of comes down to the person and money comes and goes jobs come and go who's to say that where they're at right now means they're going to be there forever mm -hmm. and so i think that again comes down to that comes down to the personality too is that are they comfortable with staying where they're at all right then you need to be comfortable with meeting them at that level too. Mm -hmm. Or you need to be comfortable with doing more and taking on more and not putting them on that person. If this is an expectation that you're setting, then you set the standard and you be what you want to see. Yeah, be what you want to attract, right? Mm -hmm. Regardless of age, from 16 to 75 years old, the median income never eclipses $61,000. And then over 70% of men never make 100K even once in their lifetime. Wow. Does that shock you? It does. And what, what about that is surprising? I don't know, just my income. So I, I'm just comparing myself and like my degree and what I've done for myself and the money that I'm able to make. Mm -hmm. So that just surprises me that it's just, and I guess I don't know the percentage for women that are my age or that age that make that much, so. The, um, the data is actually for men and women. Oh, so okay. um, let's see, so you're 29. Yes. The median income for a 29 year old is 45,000. Yeah. Is that more or less than you thought? Less? It's. I think it's a lot less than most people think. Um, yeah. I mean, like, that's just crazy because most people have families and it's everything is expensive. Mm -hmm. And are you shocked by those statistics? Yes. The median? Yes. Lower than uh, you thought? So much lower. I honestly... I, I, th I don't know why. Maybe that's my own just personal bubble that I'm in. Yeah. Um, that I just assumed that people would make more than that, especially men with like the wage gap too. I just thought, oh yeah, they're men, so they make more. Mm -hmm. Um, yes and no, depending like the financial ones. Yes, because of my career, and you know, it's not me being narrow-minded. It's more so like what I see, like what I've been exposed to, and what I know on a day-to-day -day basis 
the other statistics like the heights, those sort of things, not so much. I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I expected it. I'm pretty politically aware. And so that was, I even said the, I said the $40,000 thing and then yeah. I changed my answer for 27 and I shouldn't have because I knew better. That shows how much of a stigma there is. I still convinced myself that it's higher even though I literally read stats that say it's lower. Yeah. I wouldn't say I'm shocked. I would say it's more shocking that I guess we as a woman to have this expectation of things to be there when they're not. And I think that it's, it's more shocking that um, the reality of where people are in life is not praised more than just the smoke and mirrors of where you think you're supposed to be. And so I think, I think it's just kind of sad that we are setting these such high standards for men in a way that I'm seeing, you know, we see now that that's not really where they are. And I think that it's, it's more shocking that we still keep putting these, this standard and these numbers and, and not realizing that that's just not realistic. So you're more shocked by how far off people are yeah, in their I realism, say. I guess. Yeah, yeah, I would say I'm more shocked by how delusional maybe we are about the reality of where people are in life. Well, when, you know, that's all you're seeing on social media, I think it really makes it seem like it's more common. Or you see all these young people who are flexing all these nice things on Instagram and it's like, oh, well, they must be making so much money. Well, they could be in debt. You yeah, never and know. most of the time they are. And a lot of the times it's just, you know, I, I start, I'm at a point also too where you everything you see on the internet, take with a grain of salt for the most part mm -hmm. because you can work from home and not wear any pants and still have a nice shirt on and no one's gonna know. So That's really true. perception is reality and yeah. you gotta take it for what it is and understand that that's where you're at in life is not contingent on where someone else is because if you're caught up with what everyone else is doing and flexing whatever and having all of this FOMO, mm -hmm. you're gonna be really unhappy. Yeah. And so I think just having a, a singular line of thought with what your where your goals are going is way more important than trying to keep up with the Joneses. Yeah, I was gonna ask you what made you say that number specifically. Like, is it the people you're around? Is it your industry? Is it guys you've dated? Like, kind of all. You of guys it. I've dated, my industry, those sort of things. So, I would say that's a combination of all of those. Um, I would say just in terms of people I've dated, and then also you know including my income as well. Um, but again, in terms of of that number, I understand that that's not where everybody's at, and that's fine with me in terms of where I'm at is I'm very much comfortable with being someone who who makes more. That's never been an issue for me. The only issue I've had is other people being intimidated by that or not, uh, not accepting the dynamic for what it is, and I think that can be hard when we do push this pressure on men to be the breadwinners when we don't need to do that. I very much am very happy with the 50-50 income split, uh, but actually the big thing for me and the big reason why money would be important is that it actually shows, I, I've kind of mentioned this, drive. So for somebody who is making more money, and I'm sure that there are people who don't make as much, who have a lot of passion, a lot of drive, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. But if you're making that much, it already is being shown um, and you're on a trajectory to continue forward and be successful. Got it. So it kind of shows you other traits that this person could maybe have that would be appealing to you. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. I make 52. Okay. So I think 50K is comfortable. I My first job out of college, I made 30K. It was mm -hmm. a nightmare. I knew I was underpaid, but I thought I was getting good experience. I wasn't. It sucked. Um, the job just was awful. But I hated making 30K. I had to pick up a bartending job on the side. It was just... It was a nightmare. And so I think people who make less than 50K are probably, they have enough things going on that prioritizing a relationship might be difficult for them. Not impossible, but it might be difficult. And if, I mean, I guess like I could, I could date someone who makes under 50K, but it would have to be like, I would never want them to, I, I wouldn't want them to feel like that they had to keep up with me and my lifestyle or that they had to match my lifestyle because that's a lot of pressure to put on someone. Mm -hmm. And so I would want someone who we don't even have to deal with that pressure. But again, if I like him a lot and he makes a little bit of money, I'm sure I'd try to make it work for a little bit. I chose 120 just because of my income myself, okay. the lifestyle that I, I mean, I'm single, I have a child. So we live, I already have, I'm, I'm 30. I've, I already have my ways set and 
what I enjoy doing and mm-hmm. I know how much that costs to do. So I want to live comfortably. I want to be able to have fun still. I want to be able to see things and do things and not be just like stuck. And I want to have nice things. I don't want to live out of my means, but I just want to have nice things. Yeah, so I guess on average right now, on average, I am making about 50K. I don't even think I'm making that much, to, to be completely honest with you. Um, and I'm so new that, like, my income is so low that I'm kind of like, oh, well, I'm just going to take my income, and if it's the same as mine, that's fine, you know? So that's kind of where I came up with 50K. Um, that was honestly it. It was just for my own personal. I'm like, yeah, that's what I make. That's probably what other people make too, right? <laughs> right. So A lot of people use that as a way to kind of figure out. Figure out. Yeah, because mm-hmm. it's yeah. like you have lived your experience. You're basing mm-hmm. other things off of that. Yeah. So have you ever dated a man who makes like the 75K that you wanted or around that? No. No? No. Less than that? Mm-hmm. I mean, I've been in a couple different relationships in my life. Nothing... St- Nothing so serious that I considered marrying somebody and nothing so serious that I introduced them to my family. But I have dated men where they do do well for themselves, but I didn't see a future with them, so I didn't pursue the relationship further. Yes. Okay. Was it like official? Was it casual? What kind? Um, Just a casual. Casual? Okay. Yes. uh, Out of the four people I dated, two did. Okay. So you were like official? Yeah, for more than a year okay. each. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the last person I was with made more than that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly, it didn't sway you wanting to be with a man who makes that much again. So. No. Yeah, no, that was not a, not the reason that we were together and not, not a reason that we broke up. So. <laughs> Would you marry a guy who makes less money than you? Yeah. I don't really care too much about the money. That's not really a contributing factor. Okay. There's other things that are more important. Yes, there are. I would have no problem marrying someone who makes less than me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you said you'd be okay with being the breadwinner. And That's that. totally fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, again, I, I don't think that it's a hard cutoff line. Um, money shows drive, but it's not everything. Like I said, there's some people out there who are very passionate, have a lot of drive on their own. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yes, I would. And I know you mentioned in the Would You Rather video, like, as long as they're still contributing something, mm-hmm. you said that you would be okay with that as long as you're not the only one who's, you're not, you're not the breadwinner, right, per se. Yeah, and I've actually in the past had, um, I've made good money ever since being out of college, so I've been, you know, fine. But at the same time, I've had unexpected things pop up. I never want to raise a family and have that kind of stress beyond multiple people. So while I make enough money and could be breadwinner of a family, I don't want to run into that problem in the future. Got it. Yeah, mm-hmm. especially because, you know, money is the number one cause of divorce. It's like, I don't even want to mess with that. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't want to, but I, I would. <laughs> I mean, we must be vibing, I guess, and everything must be very great, too. So what else would he have to have going for him in order for you to be okay with that? He would have to just be a really great guy, be able to get along with my family, be a great family person. I'm very family oriented, so I want him to, you know, at least be able to have the same going for him. Mm -hmm. Maybe he doesn't have a family. That's okay. At least be like putting my family first as well Um, and have goals and be able to accomplish them and have a good mindset and take care of me, take care of my, like me and myself and put me first and just little things too. So I guess the money doesn't have to mean anything, but as long as you're prioritizing me, then that's what I appreciate. So ideally you would like someone who makes more. I would. Like I, I do, I hate to say this, but I, one of my first questions is I'm asking you how much money you make. I don't oh, really? want to waste your time. Yeah, yeah. You ask that on a first date? I mean, yeah, I yeah, am before I even maybe even date you. <laughs> okay, so have you gone on dates where you've asked men that? Yes. And what do they say? So I have like 18 questions that I'll ask somebody when I first get to, actually it was my grandfather that asked these first 18 questions. And after he asked those first 18 questions for me to ask a man, I was like, I'm going to keep this going. I really like where this is going. And that is how I'm able to like, you know, it's a very good 18 question. And you just <laughs> weave people out. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, you didn't You didn't, you check didn't make it. <laughs> Did you come from a household that discussed the concept of money? Like, were you raised in a way where you were kind of more aware? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, I was. 
I grew up in, my family has fluctuated financially significantly over the course of my life. So I'm very open-minded when it comes to how much money a person makes and I don't equate how much money you make to a person's character. There are so many circumstances that affect how much money a person can make. Assuming that someone makes a lot of money and that immediately means they're a hard worker, that's not fucking true. Um, assuming that someone makes no money and that means they are not a hard worker, that's not fucking true. There are people who work in nonprofits that are the hardest working people you will ever fucking meet and their time is donated. They probably don't make that much money, but they're the greatest people on this planet. And then there are people who are born into jobs that they were just given. They make a shit ton of money and they didn't do anything to earn their work there. They might work one hour a day. So as trying to attribute like characteristics to the amount of money that someone makes is just not, it's just not accurate. Yeah, there's all this talk about like being high value and and a lot of people equate that with making a lot of money but I just I don't think that's true I don't think just because you make a lot of money means that you're high value um, and I think viewing people that way is really detrimental and harmful to relationships I completely agree with you yeah I completely agree with that no not really um I am I'm very very fortunate my parents my parents did make great money. They do make great money. Um, I'm so fortunate. I really am. That's I'm. I don't mean to highlight my privilege, but that is absolutely where I come well, from. Well, you can't help where you're born into. It, right. And so I, no, I we really never like my parents always instilled just you know, work hard, um, and you know the money will come kind of thing. And that that's so to me, I was always like, oh, work hard and money will come. Cool. College, right? So like we go to college, and I just graduated with my master's in December, and it's so funny now because I, I was even talking to my parents about like I'm very surprised on how little I'm making with a master's, yeah. and you know they both were like, oh, it'll come, you know the money comes, it comes, and I'm like, okay, sure, and maybe that was their experience, but after you're telling me all those statistics, I'm like, I don't think so, like I really don't. It could. I'm not saying it it could not come, but. It takes a long time to make money. It's a good good money yeah. in a lot of industries. Yeah. Right, right, and so I. Yeah, it does take good time, and I'm, yeah, I, I'm, I am very surprised, though. Um, but money was talked about, but I just, I mean, my parents are very financially responsible as well. Yeah. So maybe they instilled those values in me, so now I'm like, oh, I'm kind of happy they did that, because now I'm like, oh, I'm going to save all my money. <laughs> That's a good skill to have. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes and no. My parents always taught us, you know, if you buy something, buy something quality so that you don't have to replace it over time, that kind of stuff. And my parents always taught us, like, you got this $20 for your birthday. You got this $10 for your birthday. Like, this is a lot of money. You take care of it. But it wasn't in the way that I think, like, when I would raise my kids, I always think of having these three jars, right? And so you teach people the difference between this is your invest money. So if you want a lemonade stand, mm -hmm. you know, you can <laughs> go buy lemons with this part of your jar. Another third goes into, you know, savings. And then the other third is your spend fund money kind of thing. Do you think as a society, we prepare people for grasping the concept of income or just financial literacy in general? No, not at all. No, because there's so much, there's still so much stigma around how much money you make. Even like the idea of sharing your salary with people in your workspace is like a new thing. Like my team at my company, we are very big about being open about that on our teams. But like, have I had managers in the past try to tell me in one-on-ones, hey, don't tell anyone how much money you make. Yeah. Do I know my legal right to do that? Yeah, so I'm gonna keep fucking talking about it. But like no one talks about it, and so we don't know. And that's kind of like the way I was raised. You know, like I, we didn't have a lot of money when I was really young. We moved to a township where everyone in the township made more money than my family. It was very obvious, I knew it to be true. And I still struggle with my like relationship with money and how I view myself. Like I, I struggle with that all the time. I try to convince people I make more money than I make by the way I dress, by like the invest, the kind of laptop that I get, by, just like I, I, I feel a need to convince people of it because I know that they're gonna be judging me for it even though I know I, I'm not probably gonna judge someone for it. Mm -hmm. But like it's, it's a social dynamic that exists and I fucking hate that it does. A lot of women have sat here and they want a guy who makes a million dollars but they don't understand, first of all, it takes a long time to make money. So much, yeah. Like, sometimes you have to grow with a person in your relationship and build your wealth together. Like, it's not just like a millionaire is gonna show up on your doorstep. Absolutely not. <laughs> Along with a lot of other things that I think we've, we've kind of failed at. Um, but I think people are becoming more aware and what stinks about it at this point in time is that now people are really feeling the effect of that lack of financial literacy. No, not at all. When I was going through school, um, you know, particularly in like high school and in college, there were no financial literacy classes. I know that they try to like teach people stuff, but you know, 
in my career and things that I see, people have no idea how credit works. People have no idea debt to income ratios. They have no idea how loans work. They have no idea where to even start with a lot of this stuff. And I think that's, you know, doing a disservice to people by not educating and not teaching them. But it starts at home too. If the parents aren't financially literate, they're not going to be able to teach their kids how to be financially literate. So it starts there. I mean, my parents did a really good job teaching us, like my siblings and I, about money and those sort of things. Like, I have no debt. I don't think a lot of people my age can say that. So I you're 24 school. and you have no debt. That's, I mean. Yeah, I have no school debt or anything like that um, because I worked really hard for scholarships, academic scholarships, so that I could put myself through school mm -hmm. and not have to worry about paying back thousands and loans for the rest of my life. Like my parents did teach us how to be financially responsible. I can't attribute that to my upbringing. Mm -hmm. Yes, but not everybody is in that kind of a fortunate position. Right. Yeah, and I think we can learn a lot about our society by what people don't know, and yeah. financial literacy seems to be a big one. I and agree. just from interviewing people, like most people have no idea how rare it is what they're asking for. I mean, if you're sitting here asking for a man who makes a million dollars, okay, that's fine, shoot for the stars. But also, what do you bring to the table? What does that guy want from you? And understand that you're asking for a, le a fraction of a percent of a man. Yeah. So if you're not having success in your dating life, well, it could be because you're asking for something incredibly unrealistic. And you're not bringing the value to the table either. Yeah. People want everything, but they don't want to put any effort in. If you want somebody like that, you have to be willing to bring the same level of effort that that person is yeah. pulling. Like, it, you know, you can't just expect somebody to hand you everything and you do nothing. Be what you want to attract, right? Yes. Not as well as we could. Um, I was homeschooled, so I I had a lot of financial transparency within the education that I received, and I'm really grateful for you know to my parents for that. But I hear that you know the high schools they don't really talk about personal finance. People will take courses in college, and that's mind blowing to me because unless you're in a business field, you're still not taking a personal finance course if you're in a PT, nursing, etc. So why they haven't integrated more financial courses in the, at the high school level, I think that's way more important than some of the other stuff that they're teaching. Yeah, like the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Why do I need right, to know that? Right, I've never used that right. other than in that class that I took. <laughs> um, so I think that we could, the next generation would be set up so much better if they just made a couple of changes with the education that kids are receiving. I agree too, and just like, so people understand what they should be working towards, first of all, what's realistic, and what they're asking for in another person. I think expecting something of yourself is one thing, but when you're expecting it from another person, it's a whole new ball game, right? Um, and, you know, as a woman makes more money, she typically wants to be with someone who's at her level or above, so that automatically limits the pool of men that you're selecting from um, and, you know, decreases your chance of success in your dating life. I mean, even an average master's degree salary, someone who has a master's degree, is $69,786. And think of how much debt you have after going to school. It's crazy. And I think you can learn a lot about our society by what people don't know in this case. And most people don't know the statistics. No, I don't. I really don't. Um... I wish they like taught about it, you know? Like I, I really wish they did. You would I, think something so important would yeah. be something that we learn. Especially, and especially because in society too, like it, it does matter. I mean, money matters. As much as we want to say it doesn't, maybe not in a dating, but like just living. I mean, you have to, to, to buy groceries, to buy, pay rent, to live on your own, to buy a car. Like everything requires money. It just, it does. And if you're not making enough of it that's your life is constantly stressing about where am I getting money from how do I make ends meet how do I get into a relationship how do I raise a family how do I do this and that's so incredibly difficult and nobody prepares you for that you know we don't go to school and nobody prepares you like hey this is how the world works and this is why money is important this is why I don't know yeah no I don't think I was we were prepared at all it does matter to an extent and I think to say it doesn't would be silly right yes financial yes. independence and being responsible I think matters a lot and then money is the number one cause of divorce so it's yeah. like clearly x is affecting y and it's like a trickle down effect yes. right like mm -hmm. it, it it does matter mm -hmm. it does absolutely it does <laughs> no i think also in our culture we're so hush hush about talking about money and i think that 
we've had this whole American dream pushed on us for so long, and what does that look like? It's the money, it's the beautiful things, it's the, it's the beautiful wife, it's the picket fence and everything else, and that, what is it, what, was it Hemingway that said this? Uh, that a lot of people think of themselves as just an embarrassed uh, millionaire in waiting. Yeah, a lot of people are thinking when I win the lottery, when I do this, you know, these really unrealistic yeah. expectations. And I remember from my own upbringing and, and, and education where financial literacy, literacy isn't really pushed on you. It wasn't really taught in schools. It was learn everything except how to take care of yourself, really. And I think that's been such a detriment to a lot of people because that's, you just see the flex in front of you. You don't see either the work behind it or the credit card debt behind it or anything else behind it. Uh, the only advice I really got was if you can't pay off the credit card bill every month all the way, cut up the credit card. Um, but we are such a consumer society that it's hard for people to not want to again, you know, feed into this idea that new is better and we, and it's, you know, giving us a serotonin hit of, of new shiny things and not really understanding that that's, that's temporary, but that debt is there. Yeah, and I think a lot of people also don't know, like some of the most wealthy people in the world are the most depressed. And just because you have all these nice things or make all this money, I mean, to a certain threshold, it really doesn't get, life really doesn't get much better for you right. once you have a certain amount of things. Of course, it's nice to be, you know, not having to worry about bills and being paycheck to paycheck, but after that, it's kind of just like... Now what? Yeah. And if you aren't, uh, if you don't have hobbies or goals or things that get you excited about getting up for the day, then you're going to be unhappy. And again, it just, money isn't something that's, in my younger days, it was, yeah, sure, I would definitely have... Followed on, I've fell into that fantasy before, and then when you're in that fantasy and you realize that it's, it's not that, um, I think it becomes a lot more important to understand that what you're signing up for is something that is going to have a big, a big impact on you. And again, if you place just the value of a person on what they, what paycheck they have, that what does that say about you as a person? So only one age from 16 to 75 has the top 30% of men making 100K. If you had to guess, what do you think it is? Only 100 thousand. see, and that's, for people who want a fucking millionaire, 100K is not a lot. Yeah. I'm gonna guess age, is it right before retirement? 55? 73. Oh, that hurts so much! Oh, and it's just such a lie of a I know country. and then you see all this no one says what their salary is or is no. like open about it and then you get on social media and you only see the people who are flexing their money or who have a lot of money or are pretending to have money and then you're like oh all these people make so much money why am I not making so much money or why am I not with someone who's making so much money yeah. and it completely just ruins the way that you view money for yourself but yeah. also what you're expecting from a partner will also be yeah, yes, 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 and yes, period. But also, if you're expecting, you might think you want a guy who makes like all of this money, but what you really want is a guy who acts like he makes all of that money. Because yeah. we, people who have really nice cars and really nice homes, they're paying off their homes. They're paying off their cars. They don't have all of that money up front. They have enough to prove you can trust me and I can pay you back for this. That's great. But like, don't even get me started on the scam that is our credit system. But it's just absolutely infuriating because it's like we are taught to believe that once we start making a little more money, we should start living a little more above our, our means. Mm -hmm. And if we make a little, I mean, that's why so many people, I think a majority of people, I could be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure a majority of people in this country live paycheck to paycheck. doesn't matter how big that paycheck is. The second you get a little true. bigger, you're getting a little bit nicer of a car. You might be moving into a nicer apartment. The difference in the amount of money that you have isn't that you know, different, but it's like, once you can level up, you do level up. And that's why people are convinced that they make this much money when they actually, they actually don't. They're just kind of getting a little bit, they're risking a little bit more once yeah. they make a little more. And that's how you blow all your money. And that's why mm -hmm. you shouldn't try to keep up with the Joneses, right? Exactly. And I fall victim to it all the time. I feel like this is a trick question. So I'm going to go high. I'm going to say 73. Oh my gosh. Right on the money. <laughs> that's so I funny. Love that. And what do you think makes women want to be with men who make more money? I think that a man's ability to provide for her is very attractive. 
Um, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that as I'm getting older and I, I think as we're progressing, um, like our generation, a lot of girls don't want to work. They want to shop and they want to be able to take vacations and have nice things without putting in the work. And I'm probably going to get bullied for saying that, but it's just what I've seen. And I think that to have a guy that makes six figures, I've heard girls say they won't settle for more than seven figures, and that's jaw-dropping to me. It's attractive to them. They don't want to have to work, and they want to be provided for, and that is why they look um, so heavily at income. I think a lot, well, straight women who want to be a stay-at-home mom and they really want to commit to that lifestyle, there's nothing wrong with that lifestyle. I think if I decided to be a mother, I, I would understand. I would probably feel that pull. I don't know if I would go that way. I, I have a feeling I would go the other way. But I understand wanting to commit to that full time. The work of a mother is so overwhelming. The work of a home, if you're just keeping up a home in general, like that's a lot of shit to do. It's you like can't, a full-time job. It's a, literally a full-time job. Like people who have these huge houses will often hire people to take care of their huge houses or hire people to take care of their kids. And so it's like, if you can recognize that you can pay someone to do that for you, you can also recognize that you need the time and space to do that yourself, meaning you're probably looking for a husband who can give you enough money so that you can maintain that lifestyle. That's totally understandable. I don't think that it's realistic in this country, which sucks. I think it should be realistic, but I don't think it is realistic. And so I think dropping the expectation until we have like a system that supports people who wanna be stay-at-home parents better would fare well in love. Yeah, at this point in time, I, it's becoming way more rare for a one income household because yes. it's nearly impossible for so many people, especially when you hear the median income is $40,000. You can't, no. a family on $40,000, that's insane. It's, it's literally impossible. Yeah. And we're entering a recession. And what do you think the men who are making more money are looking for in a woman? Um, I feel like it varies from person to person. However, I do feel like a lot of the guys that do make a lot of money they want somebody to be a little bit um, more submissive to them, almost. Like, you can't have two dominant heads butting each other in the house. It doesn't work. Um, the, the guys that are very successful, very high caliber men, not saying that everybody's like that, but I do feel like they want somebody like at their level or they expect them to have something that they're very passionate about in their own interests and bills aren't like a factor as long as you're pursuing something that you genuinely enjoy and that gives you fulfillment in your life. I feel like those are things that they look at as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the traits that come along with that more so the dollar amount, right? Because if yes. a guy's making so much money, the girl really doesn't need to be making you know, the same. No, but, but she still needs to be a productive member of society. Right, like, like I'm sure he wouldn't want her to sit on the couch all day and no, scroll on her phone. No, no, no. You have to be a productive member of society. You have to be contributing something. Yeah, or at least be supportive of him too. Exactly. Right. Yes, exactly. I don't know if it's specific to partners making more than you, but I think in general people having unrealistic expectations is a lot of the world feels like the world is against us, and I get it. I felt it. Um, and so when you feel like you're constantly being put down, um, you know, by a number of different things, you want something good for you, right? You want the best of something, and so that comes with having. You know, the partner who's a 10 in the looks department and who makes $200,000 and all these other things that aren't necessarily realistic. Um, and then again, without a lot of financial literacy in the world, people don't know how unrealistic that actually is. So our dreams kind of run our lives, <laughs> which is a good thing sometimes. Um, but you also don't want to set yourself up for too big of disappointment. Right, and I think at least knowing what it is you're asking for can help you especially when you're dating, being more realistic and understanding what it is you're asking for. Because I think a lot of times that's what holds people back and they, they're like, well, you know, things aren't working out for me. I'm not meeting this guy who makes this much money. I don't understand. And so all the blame goes back or you put the blame towards everyone else when in reality, sometimes it's just yourself being a little bit unrealistic, but. Yeah. I, so I think that men look for somebody that, I don't know, they're able to like, um, a mother because um, you know most people do want that family so a provider as well um, and somebody that's goal-oriented able to get the job done um, and of course you know we are the home we take care of the homes and I you know 
we still do that even if we are working. So somebody that's able to take care of everything around the house and keep a positive mindset and just be a supporter. And I don't know. Yeah. What advice would you give to women who care so much about how much a man is making? Like if you could just sit with them one-on-one, -on -one, what would you say? I would say make it yourself. Make, make that money yourself. You want a man and you want money. Those are two separate things. The more you equate men with money, the less you're going to think critically about everything that this man is going to do to your life. Le the less you're gonna care about the low blows that he takes when you're in a fight. The less he's gonna care about like, did he do this because he loves me or did he do this because I had to remind him? And like, you deserve to have all of those answers to those questions without the transactional component of, well, he bought me dinner. Well, he pays for this. Well, he pays for that. I mean, I have friends who like, will do things that their parents ask them to do just because their parents are like paying for certain things. That's like a tough relationship to have. Like you want someone who is giving because they genuinely want to give, not because you are expecting them to give it to you. If you wanna make a lot of money, go make a lot of money. That's on you though. You should never put that pressure on your partner. You would never want that pressure put on you. I never want the pressure to put on me to make more than I can possibly make. Right. You know? And it's one thing to be a provider mm -hmm. and you know have that kind of mindset, but I think it's different than like being regarded as an ATM. I completely agree. I think provider, this idea, if you are really into the idea that like one person's the provider and one person's the caretaker and you really fuck with that, that's fine. Providing looks so different to so many people. Like providing could just look like asset management you know it could look like maybe he doesn't make a lot of money but maybe he owns a restaurant and gets a lot of good deals on like local grocers and you are your food is your pantry is constantly stocked you're eating good every night because he's cooking good for you every night like there's so many ways in which a man can provide beyond his wallet and there's also so many ways in which women can be caretakers without being mothers it's just it, it you see how like quickly it you fit yourself into an expectation and he's gonna hold you to standards you might not wanna hold yourself to if you're holding him to standards that he might not wanna hold himself to. Like it's not, you're not talking about love anymore. All right guys, that's all I have for this video. If you liked it or found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to be in the loop for when I release new content. Also, if you like this style of video and you wanna see me bring more girls onto my channel, please let me know down below. Would love to hear some other topics or questions you would like us to answer and cover. Would love to hear your feedback down in the comments. If you haven't already, be sure to follow me over on Instagram at Courtney Christine Ryan. I love connecting with all of you guys over on there as well. As always, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all next time.